The Impact of Martial Arts Post-Dialectic by Ryan Shanahan The body is a wondrous creation of ergonomic function and anatomic possibility. It defines the form of our existence in this world and the method of our interaction with it. We master the general use of our extremities by the time we reach adulthood, but elaboration on basic function is something we develop over a much broader span of time. By this, we can understand that all creations are designed with a characteristic nature, defining the boundaries by which they are meant to operate. Our bodies are among these, which we interact with under certain design parameters, which define principles of movement. These principles are grasped by conscious articulation and clarified by stresses on the body in the form of pain. Bringing out the potential of our bodies is a lifelong pursuit that is only possible with persistent development and everyday training. While many movement arts share lessons, techniques, developmental components, capacities, and outcomes, the martial artist has undertaken the harder version of them all by accepting its discipline as a never-ending pursuit, by welcoming the forging of the body to meet the art's high standards, and by pursuing excellence measured only by competitive martial engagement with others of the same mind. Those who have developed a passion for their art do not often have trouble maintaining the focus needed to continually push at the limits of physical boundaries. But a martial artist may find that devotion to the task at hand is understandably a much richer experience when one discovers the connection of the art form to the self, which goes beyond any individual technique or practice and is found in the principles behind the practice. Like the difference between being certified and qualified, one may be capable, even proficient in performing a task, or may possess certification for a position. Yet a person certified, while having adequate technique, is found without principled understanding. Qualified individuals, on the other hand, as the word denotes, possess a certain quality of character derived from consistency in passionate interests related to their qualifiable work. Such individuals have stepped outside the boundaries of certificate practice and have discovered a wealth of interest driving the spark in their character and the connection to their discipline. It is of a certain peculiarity that most today who walk the crucible of life will never know what it's like to be in top physical shape, especially as the long history of man on earth has necessitated the cultivation of physical prowess for survival, for defense, and for sustainability. It might be more common or noble to mourn those who will never partake in the magnificence achieved through some physical mastery because of physical limitations, and call it a tragedy if it weren't now so common to actively reject and subvert the potential of the body by a society complacent with sedentary comforts and habits that degrade the body and mind. William James once wrote, most people never run far enough on their first wind to find out that they've got a second. A wonder of today is that in spite of human history and genetic conditioning, we have advanced in so short a time as to allow and divert almost all care to the support and sustaining of those unhealthy habits and things that lead to the degeneration of the human condition. Martial arts is a history of the human condition a representation of the body in top form, and a practice well suited to combat a sedentary society by reminding us we are powerful, capable creatures, adaptable to the highest degree. We are beings subject to a physical condition with a physical environment. Even with the creature comforts of modern invention that allow one to neglect almost all healthful considerations, one statement quoted by many remains true as ever. Be kind, for nearly everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle you know nothing about. This common condition is a symptom of forgotten potential where passionate interest is substituted with moment-to-moment -moment distractions and skills such as mental fortitude and physical conditioning go underdeveloped. Skill development in the martial arts is one thing we practitioners are able to be passionate about. Passion is essential to bolster our efforts to achieve our potential. However, potential is an abstract idea to those who haven't cultivated a sense of self and self-worth. 
The physical dominance of our nature necessitates an exploration of these traits within our circumstances. Human circumstance is largely made up of combative and survival histories to which our tradition of martial practice gains much of its value. Beyond this lies the understanding people will find they are more free when they are able to move freely. By this, I mean that a person may feel more free to act and do as they like and gain richer life experience once they have limited physical limitations. In so doing, confidence is harbored as a person begins to discover more of what they are capable of. Moreover, a person who has gained confidence in this manner may have greater ambition to engage themselves with other talents or to discover new ones. In this way, athletic study in the martial arts can have an even greater effect on a person's mind than on the body, because martial arts has a way of lifting perceptions out of a cycle of routine redundancies to a more creative, enthusiastic, and interactive frame of mind in which potential is discovered. Martial arts is unique in its ability to offer experience that demands the focus of all the senses of the body, incorporating its extremities in an infinite exchange between self and an opponent, a partner, an object, as well as experience in exchange between self-will and consciousness. By this, we may well say that martial arts, in all its propensities, is an activity of self-discovery, an action of self-discipline, an exploration of the soul of man. As the Roman Stoic philosopher Seneca asserted, difficulties strengthen the mind as labor does the body. The movement arts, especially the martial arts, engage us in a difficult pursuit of physical vocabulary that allows us to understand our nature as physical beings allowing a confident, calibrating perspective to emerge, giving us the fortitude and strength needed to represent and uphold our values. Martial practice in simple terms represents a communication of physical exchange in a system of leads and follows, gives and takes, pushes and pulls. Lead and follow is a basic rule of life. Thoughts lead to action. Indecision follows fear and lack of understanding. Hope is led by faith. Love follows charity. Identity follows purpose. Passion is led by desire. Identifying with this principle is a matter of coming to know oneself better and more intimately, as well as to identify with others more fully. We can come to understand and appreciate others' beliefs, opinions, desires, goals, and behaviors simply by recognizing where each is centered. More importantly, as we apply this understanding to ourselves, we learn to live better and have fuller life experiences. The dedicated martial artist discovers these principles in quality training cultivated in the histories of cultures near and far, in the philosophies of religion, meditation, justice, truth-seeking, in short, in the fine-tuning of the multiple facets of self. It is represented in many forms, such as the flag of the South Korean nation showcasing the symbol for the unity of opposites. This principle may be best represented by a quote from Mark Twain, who stated, Good judgment is the result of experience, and experience the result of bad judgment. True principles like these are found in abundance in martial practice, accompanied by forced exertion and the virtue of knowing when to remain neutral. As Herodotus puts it, Force has no place where there is need of skill, we learn to value each other and the virtue of self-respect, and we find that quality practice and excellence go hand in hand with achievement and satisfaction in our endeavors. Spencer W. Kimball once stated, we must recognize that excellence and quality are a reflection of how we feel about ourselves and about life. If we don't care much about these basic things, then such not caring carries over into the work we do and our work becomes shabby and shoddy. Real craftsmanship, regardless of the skill involved, reflects real caring, and real caring reflects our attitude about ourselves, about our fellow men, and about life. Striving for quality in our discipline, as well as in life, requires effort which will require caring about the work we do. The skills cultivated in the dojo express the self in quality action, and actions of character formed by the foundations of technique and true principles. 
Experiences cultivated through life are much the same as this. Implementing understanding based on the guidance of true principles. The lessons learned in martial arts mirror life lessons and by transitive process enhance life experience as the art enhances you. The example of dedicated athletes and martial artists show us that our training, as well as life, can be a rich experience, full of hopeful ventures and exciting possibilities if we make it so by our efforts to achieve an excellence in the things we do.